day, ladies and gents. Welcome to TFI. I'm very excited to finally be doing this video. It's taken ages to get to this point, but we're finally ready to go with this. This video is a reference point. It's an explanation of a series of new benchmark suites that I've come up with for Autodesk Inventor. 23 different tests that I'm going to put Inventor through on different hardware to test how long it takes Inventor on certain systems to perform a certain task. 23 different tasks, each representing a real world workflow on quite a heavy and extensive data set in most cases. So a couple of disclaimers before we get started and I'm going to explain what each of the tests are, what they mean, why I've chosen them. First disclaimer is that I can't test everything. There's almost an infinite amount of different workflows that you can do on Inventor, whether you work with plastic parts, sheet metal, FEA, if you work on surfacing, freeform, you, you're creating completely different geometry on different models to someone just down the road. No two people work on the same files using the same data, so I can't test everything and cover everybody. I have to be reasonable about that. Also, the size of the assemblies that I've decided to go with represent, in my experience, larger assemblies than what the majority of people work on an inventor. So I've limited that to assemblies of 2,300 parts. Anything larger than that is difficult to get a hold of, actually. It's very difficult to get a hold of assemblies in the public domain of 100,000 parts, 200,000 parts. And if you do work on assemblies of that size and you sat there going, well, this is useless. Why don't you go with something that I work on like this size? Well, there'll be someone around the corner from you going, well, you can stuff your 200,000 part assemblies because I work on 500,000 parts. So where do you stop with it? So I've had to be reasonable and I've found that 2,300 parts, whilst it is still classed as a large assembly, it's not the biggest, but it is bigger than what most people tend to work on with Autodesk and Vendor. So I've had to stop at some point. The first test that I've got in the suite of benchmarks is called Cold Open Assembly 2,332 parts, 20,326 occurrences, open to full mode, not express mode. So I'm going to, I'm not going to say two, three, three, it's a 2,000 part assembly, let's be honest. So it's cold open of a 2,000 part assembly. And what I mean by cold open is that it's inventor opening for the first time, nothing loaded into RAM, no modules preloaded. It's a cold open and then boom, straight opening that 2,000 part assembly into full mode, not express mode. How long does it take inventor to open a large assembly from scratch? The second test is the same assembly, but just closing it, which is a bit of a weird one. But when you're closing an assembly, Inventor halts for about, well, again, that's the point to test how long it halts for, but anything up to a minute as it disperses the data from RAM. And that's time where you're just sitting there staring at a screen doing nothing. So it's how long does it take Inventor to close that assembly, disperse the, the data from RAM to a point whereby you can carry on working. So at the moment, we're mostly looking at things like CPU speed. We're looking at RAM timings, maybe RAM frequency, RAM speed. Also, hard disk speed is going to come into play here, but not too much. Mechanical disks may bottleneck some things here, but I would imagine anything faster than a SATA solid-state drive, you're not going to see the benefits. The CPU is going to probably be the bottleneck for tests like this. Okay, test number three is the cold open of the same assembly, but this time to express mode, not full mode. So this should be a lot faster than opening to full mode, but it's the same assembly, cold open into express mode. Test number four is the same assembly again, but closing that one from express mode. So it's just sort of full circle in this. First off, cold open to full mode, close it. Cold open to express mode, close it. Timing at how long it takes in vendor to perform those tests. Right, test number five is opening the same assembly to express mode, but then in session, switching it to full mode. So this is all loading data into RAM, it's loading data from disk, and it's how long does it take Inventor to switch from express to full mode. Test number six is working on a completely different assembly now. We're working on 965 parts and 2000 occurrences and this is a mass file save migration. So it's an assembly which I believe is around about Inventor 2015, 2016 file format. And it's taking all of the files in that data set and then saving them to the current Inventor version. How long does it take to do that? And you may think, well, this is obviously clearly a hard disk issue. This is going to be you know, faster hard disk. We'll do this faster. Not necessarily. Not necessarily. This is mostly CPU weighted, as are most of the tests but you may find certain, certain bottlenecks in some of these tests, which is the whole point of them. So it's a mass file save migration on nearly 1,000 parts. Test number seven is shrink wrapping a large assembly. So it's the same assembly as the file migration, 965 parts. And I'm basically shrink wrapping the entire thing, which results in about 1,784 bodies and shrink wrapping the entire assembly down into a single part. How long does it take to do that? And I'm using mostly default settings for the shrink wrap. So it's retaining the link with the original assembly, converting all the 
bodies into solid bodies in the shrink wrap part and then removing all internal voids. So that's a good test. That's a good test. Test number eight is drawing view creation. This is taking the first assembly of 2,332 parts, which in total comes to 2333, now including the top level assembly, and creating two drawing views at a scale of 1 to 20, hidden lines removed with a full compute past raster. So that means we're placing two views, hit and go, and then I'm stopping the timer at the point whereby inventors fully computed both views. The little green chevrons that are around the views, they've both gone and converted pass raster into full vector views how long does it take inventor to do that now they say they say that drawing view computation in inventor is one of the is one of the areas of inventor that can use multi-core technology that's what multi that's one of the main multi-threaded modules of inventor well i'll be the judge of that one we'll put it through a few tests and we'll see what happens with that so that's test number eight drawing view creation test number nine is finite element analysis meshing of a complex part. So it's an alloy wheel that I've modeled up on my channel before, and it's meshing the entire part ready for simulation within 0.5 average element size, 0.2 minimum element size. So it's how long does it take Inventor to fully mesh that model ready for simulation. Test number 10 is running the simulation. I've simulated tire pressure on the alloy wheel of 50 PSI. So I've got a pressure force around the top surface of the alloy wheel couple of fixed constraints inside the bolt holes on the alloy wheel and it's how long does Inventor take to run that simulation from start to finish. Test number 11, Inventor Studio Ray Tracing Test. So this is 200 iterations of ray tracing including prep time at 1024 by 768 resolution with shadows on and also depth of field on the camera. So it's not a simple straightforward render, there are a couple of camera effects to process here and I'm stopping it at 200 iterations. So this is mostly going to be entire, well, not mostly entirely CPU bound. It's all cores on the CPU going balls to the wall. How long does Inventor take to finish those 200 iterations? And each of the data sets that I'm using are fixed. I've zipped up every single data set. So every time I run a test, we're testing the exact same model at the exact same state. So there's no, there's no discrepancies between any of the data sets on any of the systems that are test. Test number 12, model feature tree rebuild of a complex part. So it's the alloy wheel again, and it's how long does it take Inventor to do a full model rebuild on all 50 features? And there's a whole bunch of variety of features in there, patterns, extrudes, revolves, sweeps, lofts, and a whole bunch of different features. How long does it take to do a full model tree feature rebuild? Mostly CPU weighted, but the, uh, the results might be quite interesting on tests like this. Test number 13, is an FPS test using AMD OCAT as the FPS monitor. So the first frames per second test is the 2332 part assembly. So this is a large assembly. The display style that I've went with is shaded with edges, no shadows, no reflections, the two lights, lighting style and orthographic. So this is typical modeling view. This is the style, the view style that you would normally go with if you're just doing normal modeling. Uh, the display in the application options, the display hardware quality is or well, the display mode is set to quality, which means anti-aliasing is on. The display options are set to smoother with a minimum frame rate of zero. Auto refinement is off. Now the reason I've went with minimum frame rate is zero is because Inventor has an option whereby if Inventor detects the frame rate going below a certain number, it'll start throttling visual assets and it gives you then an artificial frame rate at the end of it because it's basically turning off visual assets to get a frame rate above a certain number. So I don't want that to happen. I want a true frame rate for the hardware that Inventor is being tested on without any throttling and turning off of assets. So frame rate set to zero. So the first frames per second test is on the large assembly and it's basically just doing a pan and an orbit to see how many frames per second are being processed and pushed out your screen. And that's on the large assembly. Test number 14 is another frames per second test. Same large assembly, but this time with realistic view switched on, all shadows on, reflections on, grid light IBL turned on and also orthographic mode. So this is when you this is when you want to make a model look pretty. You turn the shadows on the reflections, the IBLs, and how long is it it's not how long, but how many frames per second are you getting to the monitor? This one is much more demanding than the first one. And uh, because it's such a large assembly, this is going to cane a lot of PCs that I test. But it's, again, it's good. It'll be good and interesting to see how different graphics cards and different CPUs cope with the load of such a large assembly and such high quality visual assets. Test 15. It's a new assembly. This is 1,154 part assembly with 3,500 occurrences, cold open. So medium sized assembly, cold open from scratch to full mode, not express mode. 
Test number 16 is another FPS test of the same assembly that we've just opened. 1,154 parts, shaded with edges, no shadows, no reflections. Two lights, lighting style, orthographic mode. This is the BAC mono data set that I use quite a lot on this channel. So it's not as big of an assembly as the first assembly that were frame tested. So it's just going to see what the difference is between that and the larger assembly in terms of frames per second. Test number 17, same assembly, but this time with all the visual styles turned on, shadows, reflections, grid light, IBL, that kind of thing. And uh, test number 18 is another frames per second test, the final one. This is on a single part. So, so far we've been testing how strong a PC is at producing smooth visuals on large assemblies, but this time struck it all back to a single part. Let the hardware go nuts. How strong is your PC in terms of visually representing just a single part on screen. So there's a shader with edges, no shadows, no reflections, two lights, orthographic mode on a single part. And then finally, same part, but this time with the visual styles turned on, realistic shadows, reflections, grid light again on the single part. And then all the results will be charted in terms of how many frames per second is pushed to the screen as recorded by AMD's OCAT software, which is Open Capture and Analysis Transact. I don't, I don't actually have someone to tell me once, but I can't remember what the T stands for. Right, number, test number 20 is importing a non-inventor assembly. It's a, it's a model I've taken from GrabCard. It's an engine by Michael Rotax 912 IS by Michael. It's a, originally a SolidWorks model, and I'm timing how long it takes for the PC and inventor to open and convert that entire SolidWorks assembly into inventor. And this is another one of the features of Inventor that they claim utilizes multi-core technology, which is multi-threaded. So it's how long does it take to open up that SolidWorks assembly. Test number 21, exporting a large assembly to step. So this is taking a large assembly and then pushing it out to a step file using the BAC Mono 1154 parts, which results in a 634 megabyte step file. So it's quite a sizable step file and we're writing that to the same disk as the source file. So there's no cross partition traffic. We're not going across a USB port. We're not going across a network. It's all on the same partition on the same disk, whatever the local disk is. Uh, as shown in the chart, whether that be a SATA SSD or an NVMe SSD or a mechanical disk, it's all the same disk. Test number 22 is inventor shape description. So this is one of the new features with an inventor, which is FEA based. It's taking a, a metal plate, providing some input features, some input characteristics, and then allow an inventor to run a full analysis on this part and then advise on feature or material removal and that's how long does it take Inventor to perform that calculation. And then finally, the final test is Cinebench, which I haven't obviously come up with. That's just a standard, industry standard CPU benchmark test, but it's just to take all the PCs that we've been using and then just run them through a final synthetic benchmark just to get a bit of a sanity check on the CPU that was used throughout all the tests to see what kind of score they come up with at the end. Okay, okay, right. What I'm gonna do now is show you on screen a page that Autodesk have published onto their website which they claim lists all the features of Inventor that now utilize multi-threads in the uh, in this system. It's it's all the areas of Inventor that can apparently use multi-core technology. So I'm just going to show that on screen, not talk about it anymore, but we'll just see what happens when we start putting some results uh, through the or some PCs through these tests to see whether any of this actually does ring true. So those are the tests that I've done. Up until now, not many people really understand which aspects of the of the hardware get used at what point within Autodesk Inventor. And there's, I think there's, there's a lot of confusion over that. There's a lot of discussion. There's a lot of misinformation out there about what does what. I don't even know at this point whether these tests will actually clarify any of those answers, but it is a good indication that if you were to buy a certain PC, what kind of performance do you th expect to get from it? working on large assemblies and smaller assemblies. So that's the suite of tests that I've used. I appreciate that you can't do these tests. The files are not available for public consumption, but the whole point of this is not to you test against me. It's, it's not why I'm doing this. This is just for me to have a single set of standardized tests that I can run hardware through and then publish those results on my UF, on my TFI YouTube channel. So that's the whole point of it. It's not for anyone else to compare with me. All right, guys, that'll do. I'll uh, see you in the next video, which hopefully should be some, there should be some future benchmark tests coming up as AMD Ryzen comes out, as various different Intel chips come out. I'm quite excited to be putting a lot of different types of PCs through the test, budget PCs, expensive PCs. This test should put them all through the paces and weed out the good from the bad. So I'll see you in the next video, guys. Toodles.